I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to our usual press briefing. Of course, I am Assistant Superintendent of Police, Samuel Sayu Conte, the Deputy Head of Media, and on my immediate left, of course, everybody knows him, is my immediate boss, Superintendent Prima Kamara, the Head of Media and Public Relations Unit Head of Police. Of course, I will skip the chairperson for now, go to my extreme right. Of course, we have Assistant Superintendent of Are Police. Are you sure? Extreme. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Extreme right, yes. <laughs> Our Tina Momo, the head of Community Relations Department. And of course, we have our Director of Crime Services. AIG by Maja, and of course our chairperson as usual, AIG Mustafa Kambe. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Media. I want to take the opportunity to yeah, thank you. actually welcome all of you there, ladies and gentlemen, to another, this is an emergency press briefing, which we did it fit and appropriate to call upon the Fort Ed State to address them with recent development events in terms of crime and uh, performance management implementation by the Community Relations Department. Without wasting time, we are here on two food issues. First is bordering on crime investigation. Today, which is the 30th July, on the tip of the 18 headed by the head of criminal investigation department move swiftly and decisively towards Wilkins Road at a specific location called Lotti Drive off Wilkins Road. And on the right by there, something unfolded itself, which all of we are here to get a false and information from it so far as we have started. We don't want this thing to go by the grapevine, people adding the different things, saying things which are not appropriate, knowing that the social media is now thriving with different views. Mr. The Brahma Jaw, my side, the director of crime services, will dilate on that properly for your information. He has the details. And at the same time, I said the other area is to come and talk about the COD aid, COD aid project that is assisting the community relations department as a performance based project to enhance performance of targeted police divisions which have been identified as pilot areas in the western area. The Code 8 program, Code 8 simply is a Catholic Organization on Relief and Development Aid, Code 8. This is a security and justice resort based financing project. The first phase we are was a pilot project in three phases from 1st July 2019 to 31st March 2020 at Godrich, Waterloo, and Arbor Police Division, that is Russell. Congo Cross, at the expiration of the first phase, Congo Cross is another division in the western area, has been added and it will soon be extended. This same 
opportunity will be extended to not more than three provincial divisions so that they can get the same benefit. The bone of the cross of the matter is service delivery, in China, service delivery, management, and community relations in, in these divisions. And uh, somebody is here, ASP Awatina Momo, the head of community relations department, we throw light on this, that service delivery performance, management performance in these divisions has improved dramatically because of this, the, the intervention of the Code 8 project. It is a pre-finance project. It's also used to give some assistance for minor infrastructural projects. So in, three, in the three divisions which I have highlighted before, Godrich, Waterloo, and Abo, which is Ross Road, there are some form of project, infrastructure projects, be undertaken as a result of the, benef the, the, the benefits or the assistance they are getting from CODIT. So ASP, Tina, Awa Tina Momo, we dilate on that. So do, these are the two areas we have called you so that uh, you can be fully apprised of and then you can educate the public as usual, inform them so that they will not be given the wrong or, or erroneous information. So on that note, I want to welcome you all. The IG should have been here, but he's having an engagement with His Excellency at State House now, so he could not make it possible. The DIG too, they are out of the building. So I will now call upon Mr. Bremer, the Crime, the Director of Crime Services, to give. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And good afternoon to the Fourth Estate. I will start with um, Khadija Sako. I briefed this body before that um, report was made at Lomli by one Emmanuel Ahai of uh, number 48A lower pipeline of Wilkins Road, Freetown regarding the death of Khadija Sako. And it was reported that the death was not natural. They believed that there was foul play, and so the said matter was subsequently transferred to CID headquarters investigation conducted, and case and inquiry suffice sent to law officers department for legal advice. That we have received. A matter was charged yesterday, the 28th of July, 2020, to Magistrate Court Number 2, uh, with the following charges. One, conspiracy to murder contrary to Section 4 of the Offenses <coughs> Against the Persons Act, 1861, and murder contrary to law. Um, Madam... Maria Masajo Bari and the son were jointly charged. We had in attendance yesterday the pathologist to give evidence, and that was done yesterday. Matter adjourned to the 4th of August. The other one is uh, the complaint against one Mohammed Kambarimba Mansare. Uh, At 100 hours on Friday, the 17th of July, 2020, one Fatu Banya of number 940 Fabanda Street, Koidu City, Kanadi Street, accompanying the 15 year old niece, Maria Masano, of the same address and filing report that on diverse dates between 
Friday, the 5th of February, and the 31st of March, 2020, at Kwaidu City, and number 7, Tucker Drive, Majay Town, Godrich, Freetown. One, Kambarimba Mansare, leader, or shall I say former leader, because I understand he has not been suspended, but actually at that point in time, he was leader of the Alliance Democratic Party and of John Kelly Street for sexually penetrating Mariama Sanko. Sano, sorry, Mariama Sano. Uh, the police recorded the report, issued police medical request form for examination, treatment, and report on the said victim. Um, the endorsed medical report in, indicated that there was actually sexual penetration. Oh, I think I should have, I should have, I should have that is all right. Anyway, um, the endorsed medical request form was returned. Um, victim made statement and has been placed actually under Don Bosco for protection because of. Um, a case of this nature at times warrants intimidation and so for her protection she is now in the custody of Don Bosco and police is making close uh, temporary care actually for protection and also to prevent interference and intimidation of the victim. Statement obtained has been obtained from as, as I said the victim um, free narrative has been obtained from Mr. Kambarimba Mansare. Uh, a team of FSU left here for Koidu. They were led by the victim to Diamond Lodge, where she alleged to have had the uh, affair where she was uh, penetrated by Kambarimba Mansare. And relevant statements were recorded. She also led them to various locations where actually they went. Uh, they later came back to Freetown and she again led them to the residence here in Freetown where again they had the affair and um, she described first before they enter the items placed in the parlor. And they say the and her seem to have completely been in line with her description. And when they got to the parlor, before they could enter the bedroom, she equally explained the position of the toilet and other items in the bedroom. And they seem to have quite actually um, delayed with her description. Then we also have in custody a Marion that, um, and the husband. These were the people she was in their custody. Um, they said to have actually taken her to the hospital where she was given an implanted, uh, she had an implant, uh, they called commonly Captain Ban. So they are with us because we believe that she's 15 years old. She's not even within the age one could think to have anything to do sexually. And so why should such a thing really happen? That actually is again a subject of police investigation. Um, the investigation is still in progress as we still have few other individuals to record their statements which will result in the conclusion of the investigation and the matter, as usual, will be given for legal advice. But at the moment, it is in active progress. Um, the one, the moderator, actually, the director of... the director of... Um, operations hinted on was actually the team, a joint team of CID and um, OSD personnel led by the head of CID. 
they acted on information and that information actually led them to Dillard Street. This is a Dillard fact. Um, the joint team led by head of CID led them to Billet Street, 33 Billet Street, 7th Battalion, where they arrested um, one Mohammed uh, Ture. And also a security guard attached to AK Security Company. They were able to discover the following. One old AK-47 rifle, six loaded magazines, 177 rounds assorted bullets, one old empty magazine, one empty AA rifle, rifle bullet shell, four and four and a half bundle half bundle of fake dollar notes, half bundle of fake dollar notes, one digital ATM sealed machine, seven white sealed rubbers containing black substance, one white rubber containing white liquid, one bottle wrapped with white cotton, laboratory equipment, gas bottles, two certificates of incorporation and registration, assorted documents, three stamps, and two stamp pads. So the arrested individual and the items mentioned, the items are actually treated as exhibits. The individual is brought in for unlawful possession. That actually happened overnight. The investigation is in active progress. Uh, we'll come back here to inform this body. The other one I would like to mention is the arson malicious damage, three missiles, which occurred in McKinney, the 17th of July, 2020, Friday. Prior to this incident, the stakeholders in McKinney, including the mayor and the deputy mayor, were contacted by the energy ministry to inform them that the two standby generators in McKinney, they would like actually to borrow one to Lungi, where they actually have light problem because the generator is faulty and the repairing is yet to take place. But the understanding was since the airport flights are going shortly to resume, they were about to resume flights at the, the Frita International Airport at Lungi. This generator was taken to Lungi so that uh, it could provide light. And after the repairs of the generator at Lungi, then they will take it back. But we must understand one very important thing, that they have two standby generators. And they said standby generators are not actually in use. McKinney is being powered from Bumbuna Waterfalls Dam. And that uh, even when the waterfalls reduce to 8 megawatts, they are still being supplied from there. It is the leftover that is directed to this end. So in fact, they have more stable light than anywhere in the, in the country. And so the standby generators were just there virtually doing nothing. So they did not just go as a ministry because it's a government property to just take it to Lunge, no. They decided to contact their um, stakeholders so that they will be able to properly explain it to the residents of McKinney to understand that even where they have the um, standby generators, they are still benefiting from the Bumuna waterfalls. 
and that the one of the two standby generators is just being taken to Lungi temporarily that after the repairs are done they will take that one back but uh, by intelligence received people were being misinformed and so there was a robust resistance when the generator was about being taken um, which resulted in the arrest of 51 suspects brought down to Freetown for investigation. And eventually, actually, the generator was taken to Lungi, and as we all know, after their own generator is repaired, this will be returned. So that is the other one, actually, I want. The, that investigation is ongoing. Uh, a team went and visited the scene, and uh, in the heat of things, mm -hmm. a few individuals, uh, up to five, and later, we, you know, lost their lives. So the investigation is still ongoing, and uh, at the conclusion of the investigation, based on evidence, uh, we may charge to court. I think I will step, stop my submission regarding the matters we are investigating to this last one. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Director of Crime Services. Well, without wasting time, I will now call upon uh, Assistant Superintendent of Police, Awa Tina Momo, to give our uh, own an old side of the story about the court date program. Yes, I was open to you. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm the head of the Community Relations Department. Actually, the Community Relations Department, we do the soft policing. We are in and we try to work together with community stakeholders, including your very selves, to prevent crime and the things that cause crime to try to stop them, or ways of amending issues that will really build up the police image. And that's the friendly part of the SLP. We do work with different stakeholders, but the CODE project really started in January when they came and shared their idea. It's not like the traditional project where you have been paid, you write a project proposal, and then they give the money, and then you implement. This one is like a pre-finance, but it is actually our normal job we are doing together with the local partnership board members. However, they give something at the end of every quarter, three months, to encourage people to do more. They, from their own point of view, they really focus on our service delivery to ensure that our service delivery is improved. And then we have effective management and also improve our community relationship. And it's almost like we have a similar objective. So we had a common ground to work together. We entered into corporate agreement. We are in SLP and call they support the implementers to do the work. We have been doing it for the past uh, 12 months. The project, ha the pilot phase have really ended. And there are a few things we really improved because everybody saw that it's really good. But whatever money paid is just like 50% bonus being agreed to personnel. But we also use it to do infrastructure uh, uh, and projects and also operational to respond to the operational needs. And uh, I think that's just like inviting you all. And that's why even when I came, I asked, what's your own corporate responsibility? We are going to like do an unveiling of what we bought from the, uh, uh, the project steering committee. That's really the committee representing the SLP in the project implementation. And it's comprised of uh, the director of operation, my very self, the head of C, I mean media, the one monitor, one uh, personnel from the M&E, we call it inspectorate unit and the gender, and the whole personnel of the CRD unit. 